incense, green coffee, popcorn. This is gonna be amazing, let's go. Have you ever thought about roasting your own coffee? I certainly have, especially when I saw a video the other day of Mark Greens in Ethiopia having an Ethiopian coffee ceremony. And today in this video, I'm gonna try and recreate the West Country version of an Ethiopian coffee ceremony. Let's go. If you don't know how to light a fire for cooking, then make sure you check out that video. Let's continue. Hi guys, so I managed to source these green Ethiopian coffee beans. I thought we'd have to go with Ethiopian, right? Seeing as we're trying to do something similar to an Ethiopian coffee ceremony. So, Rave, this is where I got these beans. Don't know how good they're gonna be, but give them a go. Giving them a smell in their green form. As you can see, they're green, not roasted yet. They smell quite chocolatey. It smells like white chocolate, like smelling a packet of Milky Bar buttons. Anyways, we're gonna get them in the pan now. What I don't wanna do is diminish what good coffee roasters do, because honestly, like I'm not gonna be roasting my everyday coffee anytime soon because talented roasters, like they just they do something special and probably this is gonna burn on here. But I'm trying to do it the Ethiopian way and I will try and make sure that they don't burn. I'm gonna try and keep them on the lighter side. We wanna try and taste any of the kind of subtle flavor notes that we can get from these uh, Ethiopian coffee beans. So let's get them in the pan. I'm just going to try and keep the beans moving because I really don't want them to like catch or burn. I might even use these tongs a little bit to just mix them up and keep them moving. But the idea is that you do it over the fire and you know the, the Ethiopian coffee ceremony is a very sensory experience so it's all about the smell, the aroma, the sight. Doing this over a fire, this will impart a smoky flavor. So I'm gonna be really interested to see what the coffee tastes like and whether you can detect that smokiness. It smells very citrusy, which is very typical, I think, of an Ethiopian coffee. Um, in, in general, you know, you, you get those sort of limey notes. All right, so we've taken the beans off the heat and we've put them in a colander. Just, you know, it's got some holes in so we can get some airflow to it. And yeah, you want to stop the roasting process and you want to cool them down because when you grind them, you want them to be not hot. So I would just release a load of steam into your grinder, which one, you know, it's going to get claggy. So as part of the Ethiopian coffee ceremony, they use frankincense. So this is a piece of frankincense. Just took some bits of embers from the fire right on there. And that is gonna start smoking it and just bring it out the most beautiful smell to continue making this a really beautiful sensory experience. Oh, this smells so good. And in the meantime, whilst we're waiting for that to brew, we're gonna eat some popcorn. All right, so we're gonna give it a try. It's lovely and sweet with the bond. And I don't think it's the sugar masking it either. I need to try this without the sugar, guys. All right, got one, no sugar. It's crazy, it's 
it's not bitter in any way. It's a very, it's a very mild flavor. I think because it wasn't roasted too dark. You've got the very citrusy notes that you'd expect from most Ethiopian coffees. And it's got a natural sweetness to it in, in the same way that when you smell the green beans, they smell a bit chocolatey. And that sweetness and that smoothness comes through in the final roasted and brewed coffee. I genuinely can't believe how good that was. I was expecting it to taste like really bitter. It just doesn't need the sugar actually. It's, it's, it's I don't, I'm, just, I'm speechless, it's amazing. Genuinely shocked and very pleasantly surprised. It's so good. We're gonna have to grind some more and do it. What I have done here is essentially a Ethiopian inspired coffee ceremony and you can do it your own way. As you can see from the stuff I've used and that, it's simple equipment. You've got your coffee pan grinder, you know, most people into coffee have got some kind of grinder, fire, a barbecue, whatever. And then, you know, the frankincense was a few quid off of Amazon. Having the frankincense and having that sensory experience of you know, roasting the beans yourself, smelling the beans at every single stage and having that frankincense going the whole time, just adding to the whole aroma and just mood of the whole experience. I do encourage you to try this, remix it, do it yourself, do it your own way. Let me know in the comments if you do. Would love to know what you do for your version and I hope that this inspires some folks. If you like this, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please do subscribe, although you don't have to. Catch you next time. Thank you.